QuickBooks Online 2022 Inventory Quantity Adjustment. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Online in our browser, searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, going into the Test Drive file, looking at the United States version and verifying that we're not a robot. Sample file, Craig's Design and Landscaping Services, holding control, scrolling up a bit to that 125%. We're then going to be looking at the 30-day free trial version. Also having that open, you might not have access to this, but we might jump over here periodically just so we can like a look at that business view as opposed to the accounting view. Going back on over to the Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. Drop down up top, we're looking at the items in the other section. This time we want to look at the inventory quantity adjustment. So to consider that, let's first open up a couple different reports. We're going to go up top, right click on the tab up top. Let's duplicate the tab one time and then again, right click it on that tab again and duplicate it again. And on the first tab, Let's open up our trial balance, which I'm going to go down to the reports on down below, looking at the trial balance, which is basically the balance sheet on accounts on top of the income statement accounts, doing so by typing in trial balance, opening that up, and we'll do a range change up top. Let's just make it from 0101 to 1 to 123121. And let's make it in 2022, 0101-22 to 123122 and then run it and the next report we're going to take a look at our inventory report so going into the next uh, line item or the next tab and then going down to the reports on the left hand side i'm going to look at the inventory valuation summary by typing in here inventory and let's pick up the valuation summary and so there we have that let's close the hamburger up top holding control scroll up just a bit and we can see we have here then the inventory items, the quantity that's going to be on hand, and the asset value that we have. Now, what we're going to have to do periodically is actually count the inventory typically. And so, and then if the inventory count does not match up to what's in the system, we'll need to make an adjustment for it. So, in other words, quick recap on the inventory. If you don't have inventory, obviously this isn't going to be an issue for you. If you do have inventory, the question then is, do you want to be tracking the inventory inside the system using a perpetual inventory method, in which case you need to do a couple more steps to make sure that we're tracking the inventory as the sales are being made, or do you want to have the inventory tracked outside of the system and say use a periodic inventory system and just enter periodic adjusting entries into the system based on the physical count. Here, we're assuming that we have the inventory that we're actually setting up and tracking with inside the system. Now, it's a little bit different for this company because this company is actually like a landscaping company. So we have more like inventory parts instead of inventory that we're basically you know, selling. But we're tracking the inventory with the inventory system for these particular parts. Now, that means that the inventory should be up to date because when we purchase inventory, it's going to give us the quantity of inventory and it should track then the value of the inventory and the total of the value, the dollar amount, the 596.25 should match, of course, to what's on the trial balance or the balance sheet, sheet the 596.25. And, but what we still need to do a physical count. So I'm going back to the inventory on the right. We still need to do a physical count especially if we're dealing with inventory that's that we could lose inventory or if it might spoil or something like that oftentimes the physical count in that case would be lower than the actual count that's going to be in the perpetual inventory system due to something that happened an error happened in the accounting or more likely something got lost something got stolen something spoiled and we're going to have to downgrade the count to account for that to do that if we go back to the left hand side we can then use our form holding control scrolling down a bit to that 110 this time hitting the plus button we can then go to the inventory quantity adjustment so we're imagining we did a physical count we're imagining our physical count is different than what is in our books count with the inventory valuation summary for example let's just pick one of them let's say the pumps are we only counted 20 of them instead of 25 of them and so we're going to go back on over and say okay that means that as of, let's say, let's make it as of 0101 uh, 22. And let's say we did a physical count for the pump. 
the pumps there and we're saying that the quantity on hand they said was 25 but we only counted 20 of them obviously we're going to be dependent on our physical count rather than what's in the system even though the system should be tracking perpetually so something happened we lost five of them or if it was a perishable item we could say well they spoiled some of them spoiled or they were stolen something or something like that but for whatever the reason we got to decrease the amount of items now the system already knows what the cost of the item is so it will be able to record a transaction for this what's it going to do it's going to on the financial statements reduce the inventory in terms of dollars and the other side's going to have to go to some kind of loss that's going to happen in this case because we have less inventory that'll be like shrinkage or something like that which represents spoilage or stolenness or lossage on the income statement and then on the sub ledger for the inventory the physical count in ledger will be adjusted to account for the physical count in terms of units as well as dollar amount let's save it and close it and check it out save it and close it we're going to go back then to the trial balance so we should have an adjustment to the inventory asset let's go into the inventory asset here and there is our quantity adjustment so we've got this quantity adjustment let's go into that and that'll take us back to our our item here for the shrinkage item which was recorded with the inventory quantity adjustment closing that back out the other side should go to the income statement somewhere because we're going to have some kind of loss that's going to happen to that and they put it into the inventory shrinkage an expense type of account so if we go into that there's the other side of the transaction with the shrinkage going back up then back to then our uh, trial balance we also have the inventory at the 54625 now if i go to the next tab over we refresh this we refresh this we're at the 546 let's go back to the trial balance did i refresh this one refresh we're at the 54625 and then on this tab we're at the 54625 and now the pumps are down to 20 units of the pump so we can see the units of the pump and the asset value at the 200 and the average cost which is if i go into it then we're going to go into that item we then have our beginning balance here and let's change the date range so we can see the adjustment run it so there is the adjustment that has been made scrolling back up going back then to our report so that's going to be the general idea when you're tracking inventory if we go back to the first tab hitting the drop down you're going to have to do a physical count even if you're tracking the inventory on a perpetual inventory system make the adjustments and if you use this form then it should adjust both the dollar amounts the shrinkage and the subsidiary ledger so the subsidiary ledger will tie out to what's on the balance sheet